This is my brand new 3D printed model roller coaster train, and it took me almost two years to make. And in this video, I'm going to show you not only how I designed this train, but also all of my past successes and failures that led us to where we are today. And believe me, this was a long, long journey. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. It all started in early 2019, almost five years ago, when Johnny from the 3D Coaster YouTube channel debuted his 3D printed wheel assembly. It was a fairly simple design that simply replaced the old plastic wheels with new fresh 11mm ball bearings. And they worked great, so great in fact, that I even got Johnny to send me a set of my own. And when they arrived, I tested them out and they were amazing. I ended up using these wheel assemblies for quite a few projects throughout 2020 and 2019. But it wasn't until 2021 where I got my own 3D printer where things really kicked off. The first thing that I decided to try and design was an inverted train, because at the time I was trying to build a custom inverted roller coaster for Halloween. The coaster eventually got scrapped, however designing the train was super fun, and I remember feeling so proud of myself that I actually managed to design my own, albeit very basic roller coaster train. Over the next year or two I would continue designing better and more realistic designs, such as a B&M hypercoaster train for a project that never got finished, a huge two foot long Shambhala train for my Shambhala Port Adventurer recreation, and even redesigning my original BNM invert train so that I could build a nemesis from Alton Towers recreation. Just after this, some slightly more detailed plans for what then was known as Project Exodus, now Hyperia, the UK's tallest and fastest roller coaster, was released. Something about these more detailed plans made me want to retry building it once again. This project, however, would never get finished as I got stuck in the design phase for my next breakthrough for my custom train. This was known as the eddy current braking system. In short, a magnet was placed under the train and a piece of aluminium or copper placed along the track. When the magnets move past the metal, it creates eddy currents and slows the train. These eddy currents are only produced when the train is in motion, which for this purpose is perfect, as it slows the train down to a constant speed. This is funnily enough exactly the same system that is used on real life roller coasters. However, it wasn't until I got back from my trip to Energylandia in Poland, where I rode Sardra and Hyperion and so many other great roller coasters, that I actually discovered what was missing from my trains. During my Hyperion recreation, I noticed that Hyperion's train has a very exposed front wheel assembly, and I wanted to recreate this in my design. This is where the first version of not only my rotating front wheel assembly was made, but also when I started designing the realistic wheel bogey that holds six bearings rather than the normal three. I would end up using this new design on both Hyperion, on the Hyperia version 3 recreation, and one of my later attempts at building Zardra, which again, got cancelled. I wouldn't end up making any changes to these designs for almost a year, and what triggered my interest in continuing the development of my custom trains is that, well... Oh my goodness, mate. I broke my £500 GoPro. Yeah. The reason my GoPro fell off is because I did not have a proper mount designed on my trains. This, combined with me being too rushed for deadlines, meant that I wasn't able to get the eddy current brakes working for Kingdom Car either. And when the train hit the corner with far too much speed, the GoPro just ripped off and got flung across the concrete. It's this very incident that made me want to redesign my entire train system. I don't have any idea whether this is actually going to work, but we're going to give it a go. So this little hole goes all the way through here, which means this can rotate up and down independently from the main chassis itself. The wheel assemblies, of course, are the ones that I've started using in a lot of my previous projects, and they work pretty well. And then just in this little hole here is my little sandwich technique where I'm going to put a screw here, and then that is, of course, going to slot into the end of this piece, so it allows the whole chassis then to rotate independently between each one. So we'll give it a print, we'll give it a try and see if it works. So I've grouped a couple of them together and I've got them printing as a little tester. We'll just have to see how they uh, turn out. Well, it works, but it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to because I have no left and right 
pivot, so it can't go around corners. So I've had to do another redesign. This one should work because it uses the bearing system underneath here, and that will allow it to twist left and right. So hopefully this one works out. Just printing it now. So it's probably about halfway done. After printing out the new universal joint, I tested it and it worked perfectly. I printed a few more off, attached the wheels, and even printed out a new front wheel assembly that was very similar to the one on Hyperion. This is a great moment to mention that MicroCoaster on Instagram messaged me and offered to print me some of my new wheel assemblies with his super high quality SLS printer. These prints came out so good and I cannot thank him enough for doing this. Because he offered to print these with such a high quality printer, I was able to design the wheel bogies with exactly the right amount of space for them to swing back and forth. You could also do this with a resin printer as well, but you would have to be very careful when you're cutting out the threads to not shatter or crack the resin in the process. Now that the main bodies were done, it was time to figure out how to get the magnetic brakes working. So I've printed out these little plastic things that basically hold this aluminium bar in place and they clip onto the track in the same way that the cross ties do. So as you can see, I've just mimicked the edge of that cross tie there and it literally just clips into the side of the tubing. Now this one, the height is a little bit too high so unfortunately it scrapes on the bottom of the screw there so I've redesigned and reprinted it and we just gotta wait for it to print but it basically lowers it down ever so slightly more and I've also reprinted the main bodies as well so that I can have this little square section where I can mount some magnets and I've actually ordered the magnets that fit this square hole exactly perfectly and then I'll just shove like two or three of the magnets in here glue them in place and yeah we'll have a magnetic brake run after printing the new holder at the right height, I started working on a downward sloping brake run to test the new eddy current brakes with. Brake run track is done, I've just got to put a little bit of glue on all of these holders and then put the aluminium bar on. However, after putting it all together and giving it a proper test run, I just noticed that it wasn't very strong. However, after reprinting many, many, many times, I was finally able to get the magnets in just the right position. So I redesigned the front one to have two magnets on the bottom, so that front car is now double the strength when it comes into the brakes. I haven't yet printed them, but I've also redesigned the middle two cars and the back one so that they can also have two magnets under each one. So it should be really, really strong now when it comes into the brake. And of course, I added some brass threads to the top of the bases so I can easily swap out designs for any up and coming project. Speaking of up and coming projects, you're not gonna wanna miss my next project, Formula Rossa, the world's fastest roller coaster. Well, until Falcon's Flight opens anyway. To make sure you don't miss this or any of my other future projects, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're notified when I upload new videos. I also have a Discord server linked in the description so you can stay up to date with any projects before they're released on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.